1,000. It was actually a pretty good picture, though. He did a yeah. good job on the Photoshop. 1,000. No Photoshop. All right. I don't think. Oh, I don't three think bet here from that. person. Let's see if Negreanu defends. Cost speed, but it's that kind of a hand. Here we go. Seven in the middle. In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, we are playing high stakes duel between Dale Negreanu and Eric Person. We are playing 150, 300 blinds, 30,000 chips deep. So 100 big blinds deep. Dale Negreanu on the button. Opens up with a four, three of spades, which is perfectly fine and reasonable. Eric Person with the king six offsuit, three bets to 3,500. This may look loose and aggressive and battly and maybe even bad, but it's actually not. It's actually GTO approved. Turns out stuff like king six offsuits, jack eight offsuit, ace offsuit are okay to three bet bluff even when you are this deep stacked. Most of your three bet bluffs bluffs are gonna come from suited connected type hands, but some of these high card blockers do mix in as three bet bluffs as well. Person does it, he's been studying, good. Over to Degranu, four three of spades, easy call. Let's go to the flop. Extra 2,500 invested Check. in acquiring a spade draw on the paired 10 high flop. The flop comes 10, seven, seven, two spades. Person has nothing. Negreanu has four high, but a flush draw. Person opts to check the king six. Maybe you want to bet, it's tough to say. Over to Negreanu, he opts to check it back. You may say, why not bet with a draw that completely lacks showdown value? And the reason is because if you bet here and get raised, it's actually a pretty nasty spot. And Person does like to check raise. If you watched the videos I've made covering him on YouTube, he gets after it decently often. And against someone who is going to check raise perhaps even more often than GTO, you don't really want to be betting with draws that would bet and then be put in a nasty spot against a raise. So I like Naranu's check. Let's head to the turn. Person with a quick check and now an opportunity perhaps to represent this ace of diamonds, which has rolled off. Certainly plausible. It would check out. 4,000. That's 4,000. And for Daniel, let's see. The turn brings the ace of diamonds. Person bets 4,000. And at this point, I think checking is probably just fine because King High can actually win at the showdown some portion of the time now. But, eh, you know, throw it a little bit. See what happens. Seemingly can't fold. I would think the options here are call or raise. Goes for the form. Negranu with a flush draw. Has a pretty easy call in my mind. This is a spot where when person three bets preflop and then checks the flop, he's gonna have a lot of marginal ace high and the ace completely nails his range. So you don't wanna do a ton of raising in this scenario. So calling's the only option with your flush draw. I can't really a thousand. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before. Into the middle. <laughs> I've done, I've done that before. Well, see, Russia, that that way it saves you from yeah. bluffing off the river. <laughs> what just happened to you? You're like, you can call me now. I I think... I've done that before. Let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. Person bet the turn with King High, which can actually win at the showdown some portion of the time. He gets called, and then he just folds. He mucks. He doesn't want to bluff again on the river. This is not a good play. The reason this is not a good play at all is because King Six actually wins at the showdown some portion of the time. Imagine on the river, he checks, and Negranu checks it back with Queen Jack of Spades, or maybe just decides to be a weakling and check back four three of spades. Person wins. Look, you basically never want to muck until the river at the showdown when you cannot win because you usually have some equity. Maybe, maybe in some world, if Person had Three two of diamonds, he could just muck if he wanted to have fun with it. But you can't muck the king high because the king high actually does win some portion of the time. Don't muck your equity. Poker's all about realizing your equity at the showdown. And when you fold before the showdown voluntarily, it's usually not ideal. What I want to know is what is the biggest mistake you have ever made at the poker table? I've made plenty, personally. You know what? Write your biggest mistake in the comment section below. I'm going to come back and tell you a big blunder I made one time. One time after traveling across the world and back, and then back again, I was playing a $5,000 buy-in tournament at Foxwoods in Connecticut. 
I was so tired. I was completely out of it. And I decided to play this hand, normal standard hand. I thought I was playing well enough. I was tired, but playing well enough. And I raised before the flop. Somebody called. Fine, whatever. Flop comes. I bet he calls. I have nothing. Turn comes. I bet he calls. I still have nothing. River comes. I bet. He folds. Fine, good. I win. Bluff got through. What I did not realize is that there was actually another person in the hand the entire time. I didn't muck my hand. I held on to it. Because as I was going to muck, the dealer's like, wait a minute, he still has cards. I'm like, oh, that player's in the pot. That's nice. That's nice. After a lot of tanking, that opponent finally folded and I won the pot. But in terms of just torching equity and not realizing someone's in the hand, that is one of the biggest mistakes I have ever made. One more funny one while we're here. I know this video is short. Not my mistake, one of my friend's mistakes. Probably the most ridiculous one I've ever heard. After a break in a World Series of Poker event, my friend goes back to the table a little bit early. He's terrible at live poker. He is bad with chips. He puts in the wrong chips all the time. He sits down, he starts shuffling his chips. He just so happened to take the players next to his chips and shuffle them into his chips. Because he's an idiot. Fine, whatever, everybody comes back. The guy comes back whose chips are now gone and he's like, where are my chips? And nobody can find this guy's chips. Where in the world does this guy's chips go? Does somebody just take them? So after a while, they pause the whole World Series of Poker Tournament for like 15 minutes while they're calling the camera to try to find where this guy's chips go. And then my friend's like, ooh, I think I took the chips. <laughs> so he told the floor man, look, I took the guy's chips. I sat down, they were kind of close to mine. I shuffled them up and uh, you know, it was just a pure mistake. Don't try this. He did get in trouble, but not banned. So that is good. That's gonna be it for today. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe buttons down below. Click the notification bell. And if you want another fun video we have loaded up featuring these two players, well, I'm not gonna spoil the action. Make sure you check it out right now. Don't fold out a turn.